It's working together. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Next, through the events of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit now dwells among us and dwells in us and he lives through us. The Holy Spirit is, what's this? The Holy Spirit is God himself. Amen. And he's acting in this world and he's acting in this world. He's at work in this world in our lives. Now, I believe in miracles. Somebody say amen. 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 But I also believe in a great deal of of, of, I'll say this, reincarnation. Now, be careful. I'm talking about the word that becomes flesh. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit of God. I believe that God works through people. Amen. Amen. Primarily. That does that mean that, that the, there's been a cessation of miracles and, a, and the move of the Holy Ghost? Far be it for me to even declare that. Because I can tell you right now of, of countless stories that have been proven of people who've received their sight. People who, who could not walk, but now they walk. And, amen? Heal us. Amen? Amen. But here's what we see. This is God himself. The Holy Spirit is God himself working through us. Now we recognize it as the Spirit of Christ. And there's a reason for that. Because it's the spirit of the gospel. It, it's what empowers us to be able to share the message of Jesus. Amen? Amen. And if there's anything you want to share with somebody, the first and foremost thing you need to be sharing is Jesus. But you can't share here again. You can't give something you don't got. Amen? Yeah. Now, you can tell the stories all you like. You can, you can tell all the little stories, memorize all the little things about Jesus, you know, feeding the 5,000 and heal, heal, healing the sick and, and, and all these sort of things that took, took place. You can tell about all this, but can I tell you that if all you do is just tell the stories, but there's nothing backing them up, there's no substance, there's no power, there's no evidence. Because here's what happens. God works through his spirit, with our spirit, and with our bodies. Amen? Amen. He draws us by his grace there's the spirit of Jesus, right? That spirit draws us by his grace to his Father. Uh, he intercedes with us and, get this, and within us and through us, he helps us to pray. I don't know about you, but I, I, I sometimes need the Holy Ghost to tell me what I, what I need to do to get up in the morning. How to put my pants on or something, you know? I have those days. Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you. Because I'm having, I've had to, come on. Here's something, watch this. The Holy Spirit teaches us. The Holy Spirit admonishes us. He admonishes us through the scriptures. He gives us the gift of discernment so that we might have the mind of Christ. And we might think about things in ways that are being informed by godly wisdom. Because some things in this world just aren't going to make sense. Amen? First off, God in the world doesn't make sense. Come on. I mean, the, 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 the plan of salvation, to us we say it makes sense. But really, try to tell that to someone who doesn't know what the, how the plan of salvation was meant to play out. Amen? Amen. It doesn't make sense. So he gives us that, that gift of discernment. He And get this, he applies and he nurtures us with the fruits of the Spirit. I don't know about you, but I kind of like that fruit. I like fruit. What does it say? Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. That's that patience, long-suffering stuff. Amen? So the Holy Spirit assures us, oh, let me give you this. The Holy Spirit assures us of our salvation. He assures us of our forgiveness. He assures us of our adoption. He assures us that we are the children of God. In short, the Holy Spirit, he mediates that presence of God in our lives and in the church. He makes it real. You've heard me preach that before. What does the Holy Spirit do? He makes Jesus real to the believer. He makes his Father, are you getting this? He makes the Father real to the believer. Amen. And how does he do it? Well, he manifests in us. Amen? And the Word became flesh. He's still doing it today. Amen? Amen. So the third thing that we see on, on Pentecost, here it is. 
The Holy Spirit empowers the church for effective witness, for service, for, for a missional work. And some of us, we need to study up on what that really looks like. Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit would empower us to do what? Be witnesses. Where? To the ends of the earth. Ever which way and everywhere. Amen? Amen. Here, there, and everywhere. See, in the, the Holy Spirit, it's Him who enables the church to serve sacrificially and to be an effective witness of Christ and of the gospel. Holiness. I think we're going to see it this way. Holiness is not just about making you personally righteous. Let me, I'm going to let that simmer. Hope, this, this is not about just making you personally righteous, but here's what it is. Reach your hand out as far as you can reach. Now, uh, you can, uh, see, you guys, you can probably touch each other back there, right? Side by side, yeah, sure enough. Can, you can't reach me, can you? Not very well. No. It would be, be a stretch of your imagination, if not your arms. <laughs> Holiness. That's the song. It's what we long for. Amen. Let me back. Let me just take a side step off of the side here for a minute. Because I want to emphasize something. I said something at the beginning of the service. I'm going to hit it again. We have reduced God down to error. Well, God is love. God is good. God is great. Let us thank Him for the food. Amen. What we forget, though, is that that doesn't really cover. And that's okay. Saying grace at the table, and that's that's all. I don't have any real problem with that, unless it's as far as it goes for you that God is love, and, and somehow everybody's going to make it to heaven. Hold on, that's a whole other different different problem, isn't it? But no, it's not. Talking about the presence of God, talking about the Holy Spirit. I don't, there are people out there saying there ain't no Holy Spirit that's of the devil. What? That's of the devil. But let me tell you this. Think about what the Holy Spirit does. First off, the Holy Spirit draws us and just brings us to God. But he doesn't stop there. It's not finished. The, and, and it wasn't an event that took place like, you know, 2,000 years ago, the Holy Spirit came, and he's gone. No. Did you know that this is a continual work? Yes. It's a continual work. But what we're talking about, I mean, let me give you this. The presence of God is powerful. And I, I fear some of us, we've gotten just a little too comfortable. Because you've made God your homie, your buddy, your pal. And I know what the word says. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Now, I have had many brothers, and I have one biological brother. I'll be going, I'm going to be seeking him out in the near future here. So if he hears this, he's just been put on notice. Um, Amen. But I've had many brothers and sisters in faith. And once in a while, it's not real comfortable. Why? Why might it not be comfortable? Well, you see, the Holy Spirit comes to convict us. If you want to be one with God, Amen. You want to? You want to? Are you getting what I'm telling you this morning? Amen. You see, he is the one who's going to empower us to become holy, not just to act righteous, not just to know how to keep the, you know, to be obedient. Did you know it's more than just being obedient? It's what causes you to be obedient. Amen. Amen. But what I'm saying here is that the presence of God is kind of frightening. How many times? Read your Bible, and you'll see that when God shows up, there are people trembling. Others are falling down they falling face forward as if they were dead. Yeah. Oh, not me. Me and God, we're like this. <laughs> I don't know what God you're talking about, but when I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying this right now because we need, to, we need to put ourselves on notice. If we really think that God is just our homie, just our buddy, he's not. He is so much more than that. So much more. And then we, we, we've reduced the fear word to respect. Well, let me tell you something. 
When there's a train going down.